Phil, you're here. Here we go again, the start of a brand new week, Bruce. Yes, it is. It's Monday night. Can I offer you some Boston bun? Oh, I'm glad you're eating. Oh, I'm glad. That, that gives you oomph. I'll save that for Peter Hitchener. He looks a bit famished. What is he going to enjoy? Why? <laughs> oh, well, I, I like sharing my food around, you know. You'd have something. Well, they have a canteen at nine these days. I don't know what the story is, but... You know, there's so many little restaurants around nice uh, Burke days. Street, 7-Elevens and convenience stores. And yes. Sushi bars. That's right. Souvlaki. Lovely to sit in the 7-Eleven and have a meal. Or go over to the Southern Cross Station, have a Danish donut, perhaps. Yes, it's probably oh, Plenty of takeaways around, aren't there? Yes. The old days of sending out or uh, even taking food to work is a thing of the past. Yes, remember when we used to take our own saucepans to the Chinese takeaway? Yeah, but we didn't cook there. No, but but uh, they didn't have little plastic containers. You'd take your own utensils, wouldn't you? Yeah, we'd take an aluminium pot, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, you would, yes. For the Kai Si Min. Yeah. I saw something very interesting today when I was on the road. I saw a Victorian number plate which simply had X on it. In other words, it must have been a very early plate. Must have been oh. the must have been the twenty fourth plate originally issued in Melbourne. X only. Nothing else. No numbers. No letters. So I thought we might get some calls later from people who have or have seen interesting number plates or bumper stickers that have amused you. I've found one in black and white in the sun today. Oh, the, sure. Uh, in the uh, the Herald Sun. Okay. All the talk about S-plates for senior drivers reminded Chris of the snail uh, that was tired of being so slow. Yeah. This is a gag. So he bought a Ferrari and had the letter S embossed in gold on the side doors. Yeah. This is as the joke goes. Mm. And a friend asked him why he had the letters painted on the car, and he replied, so that when I'm out and about driving, people would say... Look at that S car go. Oh, well, that's oh, clever, isn't it? Man. Play on words. Bit corny, Bit corny you know, but oh. but still, it's topical. It, it's apropos what I'm saying. Thank you for your contribution. I love those I love those uh, vintage number plates, don't you? Mm. Number one Vic. Oh, yes. Oh, and they, I, I think, must go... Well, they would go back to when we first had cars. Yes, and if you were to buy them, they would cost a fortune today when somebody from a deceased estate is selling them. Well, they are. They're up into six figures uh, in the... In in the million. Yes, I'm sure. So this number plate with X on it probably is very valuable Well, I would too. think so, but it's a bit of a tempt, isn't it, for, for people who, you know, galahs around the place. To help themselves, perhaps. Well, no, but of the old spray. Oh, yeah, perhaps so, or, you know, scratching the duke or whatever. And now, listen, I'll, I'll give you the TV ratings from last night very shortly. Yes, please. OK. Mm -hmm. But what was the appeal of Mary the Making of a Princess? Well, I'm not surprised. Now, I'll give you the figures in a minute. I think I'd agree with Ross and John on Breakfast on 3AW that not one single bloke would have watched it. Mm. Or did you? OK. Who are the blokes that watched? Did you enjoy it? If you mm. did, if you could joll by, uh, by mum to sit there and watch it, Ooh, did you do it through gritted teeth or did you enjoy it? Tasmanians would have loved it, wouldn't they? I don't know. And what other romances would appeal to you? And, and there are not many. I, mm. I've listed here Beck and Leighton, maybe, because mm. of Home and Away and the Tennis Factor. OK. Uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Yes. The Kardashians, but I can't think of any mm. more. They're all show business and sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, you know, a lot of movies are chick flicks, like I wouldn't want to see The Dressmaker, would you? I think that's purely for women. No, I but I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of teaming of, uh, of uh, you know, romances. Oh, yes. Uh, but they mainly show business and royalty. Well, I'd like your, uh, your list a little later on. Yeah, William and Kate we love, of course, don't we? Uh, yeah. No doubt about that. But we pretty well know the story, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, it'd be hard to tell anything that we hadn't as, heard already. As with Mary, I think if we hear mm. about the Tasmanian <laughs> bar and where they met once more, yes. we'll scream. I can't wait to hear how it rated. Would you like to share the ratings now? Oh, I'm, yeah, all right, all right. Please. Uh, Nine News Sunday. Did, uh, this isn't in order, Phil, but there are a smidge mm. in between, so mm -hmm. just excuse the uh, yeah. uh, the the reeling off of these figures. Uh, Nine News Sunday did very well. Sevens News uh, did extremely well in the top ten. Uh, second Test, I think, led Australia versus New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Sunday Night did well for seven. Sixty Minutes uh, as uh, as well. 
Uh, coming in about sixth place, sixth or seventh, Mary, the making of the princess. Yes. Which I suppose they'd be happy with that, wouldn't they? Uh, yeah, ten would be thrilled to be in the top ten. Uh, again, the uh, New Zealand test, Beach Cops, uh, the cricket show, and that's about it. So mm -hmm. Just breathing down the, uh, the top ten, ABC News and TBL families. Uh, by golly, uh, ten really promoted Mary. I was watching Graham Norton on Friday night. And for the whole hour, they left the watermark up on the screen, but, saying, watch Mary, the making of a no, princess. every time you put on 10, they had the same watermark yes. right through for the last two weeks. Yeah, it's very off-putting, isn't it, if you're watching a drama? Or... Oh, well, I think if it's down there and you can see through it, it's hardly mm. off-putting. No, make me want to switch off and think, I won't watch that now. They're promoting it too heavily. Really? No, I think watermarks should just be there for five seconds and oh, disappear again. It affects anyone, does it? Oh, well, it irritated me. Uh, Jeff at Muralbark, thank you for calling in tonight, Jeff. Good evening. Oh, g'day, Bruce. G'day, Phil. How you doing? Yeah, what's on your mind, Jeff? Sorry, mate? What's on your mind? Well, I watched the Mary show tonight. It was taped last night. Yes. I watched it tonight, and um, yeah, I'll have to put my hand up, mate. I watched it with my wife just to try and um, think that we could probably cover some ground of a, a relationship that we don't know anything about, and the TV week's that we watched and the new ideas and all that sort of gear. And, um, yeah, mate, I, I sat through it and, um, yeah, it was um, it was interesting. But, look, I've got the points up for that one, Phil and Bruce. And, oh, um, I bet you have. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's about all I can say about it, mate. Uh, I, um, next, you'll be um, going, next you'll go and see the movie The Dressmaker. Oh, mm. uh, no, look, I've got a brother-in-law who did that and... Um, he, he suffered in silence, mate, while that was on, I think. Yeah. I think he's uh, going to leave some shows to other people, I think. Right. <laughs> well, you're a brave man, and I commend you, uh -huh. and deserve, you deserve a medal for last <laughs> night. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, fellas. Good Thank on you, you, mate. All right, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. A lot of fellas would have done that, too. I'll sit here and watch it. Yeah. With you. Mm. But next time the uh, the blob's on, you you got to watch that with me. Yeah. You mentioned 60 Minutes. It didn't appear in my program guide for last night because of the cricket. So, um, hmm. All right. You tell um, me, was it there in the top ten? I don't know. Oh, yeah, we're talking. So what we will uh, do a, a little later on tonight about the romances, the great, uh, the great, uh, who you would like to see. But mm. who has been on the screen that was a number one, uh, like it was a movie, all right? Yes. Well, uh, if you go way back, you think of Spencer Tracy and Catherine well, Hepburn. That yes. was a love affair that became very public. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Yeah, that was are they more recent? Hopefully they are more recent. Uh, yes, but they seem to end in divorce, don't they? Grace Kelly, was, uh, there was a bit of a failure for uh, Nicole Kidman. Uh, yeah, but the marriage worked, didn't it? Prince Rainier yeah, we're and... Yeah, talking Grace about films and... and, uh, and uh, oh, OK. And, uh, and movies. Yes, that was a dud, for sure. OK, maybe you can think of one you want to share with us. Or who would you like to see portrayed on the screen? OK, quarter past... Definitely. <laughs> Hello. I'm, I'm not going to make light of uh, the incidents oh. in Paris. It's, 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 Dreadful. It's, it's affecting all of us. It is. But as a news reader, and I have done the same bulletins oh many years ago, mm. you tend to be a link man for the for the half hour. Yes. It becomes very short intros to uh, Paris. That's right. Uh, and to the response Geneva, elsewhere. To, uh, the yes. leaders meeting. That's right. You're quite right. Mm. You're quite right. And may I say on the topic of the events of the past weekend, how lovely it was having just a light-hearted evening last night listening to you both on Remember When because we'd, you know, we just, I think we, everybody needed cheering up and it's such a, such, you know, an unimaginable event in Paris and, and it just occupied all our weekend. I, I was fortunate enough to have been invited to two functions on Saturday. Um, the, the, there was a, a, a dog... Uh, gathering at uh, Dogs Victoria at the KCC Park um, at Sky. So that was, you know, all that everyone was talking about, of course, was the events in Paris. But getting together, that, that sort of sense of community as people with their dogs and, and having a chat sort of seemed to cheer everyone up a little bit. And, you know, uh, and then on Saturday night, the Gala Day or Gala Day, whichever pronunciation you prefer, in Geelong. And 
Uh, it it actually seemed to me like there were more people than usual. Now it was the first night parade probably ever in the in the ninety nine year history of this parade, but uh, honestly, it was just chock a block right through the centre of Ge Geelong, and I just wondered whether these people also were just coming together to hang out and to just be with friends and you know, be cheered up a little bit. And you two certainly did that last night for us, so thank you for that. But I think you're right, and I think you've probably tapped the nail on the head as far as a newsreader is concerned, and the, and, the, and the city. When there is grief with the passing of a young girl or boy in a car accident, mm. there's generally a meeting of the community that day or the following day, and yes. they turn up in their hundreds. Yes. And I think it's just a feeling of solidarity. We want to be one with each other. That's right, and we're all feeling the same way about it. Uh, in, in the main, and, and certainly on social media, there's just been an outpouring of grief and support for the French and for the people of Paris. Uh, yes, I know. I assume social media is, it plays a huge role. In it really this. does. It really does. And tonight, for instance, hundreds of people turned out at Fed Square to, uh, you know, similar sort of things. You know, candles, flowers, prayers, you know, there's just, it's... It's the response, and it's really been quite an extraordinary response, yeah. I think. Uh, it sounds tripal. I mean, even your tie tonight had the tricolour of uh, yes. red, white and yes. blue. Yes, it seemed like an important, just a subtle sort of thing. Yes. To just, just, you know, have the, the colours there. And how wonderful it's been, the, the, the bathing of these public buildings really around oh, the world in wonderful. red, white and blue. How, how lovely. How quick we were here in Melbourne. Yes. Yes, it's mm. terrific. And, and Sydney, not excluding the the Opera House. No, mm. exactly. But you know, it's just it's just nice to know that we're, we're, in many ways, even though it's a huge world out there, we are pretty much mm. united. I don't know whether you've been to Paris before, have you? I have Peter, indeed. You it's a beautiful have, place. And you have Phil. Yes, and, indeed. And I yes. gratefully have mm. too. A wonderful city. It, you could just stay there and just absorb it, couldn't you? Yes. But yes. when you look at a, a map of where the atrocities took place. Very close to where we visited and yes. where we attended and yes. the tourist attractions. In fact, I had to look at the at the restaurant with the bullet yeah. holes in the window, mm. thinking, I think it, it looks familiar. Of course, all of the French, many of the French eateries, the Paris eateries, mm. do look similar. But I thought, I think we may have had mm. dinner there, my sister and my stepfather yeah. and myself, on our last visit. I think. I mean, mm. it just probably not, but it just you know, it just sort of mm. touches a chord with everyone. It does. And we had Tom Steinfurt tonight. Uh, doing a, a piece standing in front of with the Eiffel Tower was in the background yeah. and uh, then then I spoke to Carl now Carl Stefanovic was did a very good report oh my gosh well he was the Today Show they were there and and there was a vigil going on in Paris and some some person let off some firecrackers which everyone assumed to have been gunshots and people just there was a stampede and and Carl uh, you know, had to sort of really jump for his life, or not for his life necessarily, but had to dodge the, mm. you know, this crowd of people running along. And uh, it just goes to show how on tender hooks everyone is. Oh, yes. And uh, his, you know, his report was quite sobering. Mm. And uh, oh my, who knows where it's all going to yeah, end? That's, that's it's terrible. So. Do you, now, do you think Paris is the most visited city in the world? For I tourists? believe it is. Yes. Do you think it will long-term affect tourism? The, the That's terrorist a good attack. question. I don't I mean, know. Yes, it is a good question, and and you look at trouble spots uh, like the London with the underground of mm. uh, when was that five ten the, years ago? Yes, almost? the bombings there. Uh, Mumbai, yes. where the hotel. Uh, well, was Well, Mumbai's hardly on your tourist attraction list, but uh, but London hasn't uh, suffered. I wouldn't. Uh, I no, wouldn't imagine not. so. No. New York hasn't because of the seven eleven. Nine eleven. Nine eleven. That's sorry. that's right. Uh, yes, you're, you're quite right. So we, make... we are resilient. We go yes, back. Yes, that's right. Mm. And resilience is a sign of good health yeah. uh, you know oh, it's a sign a of courage too and, and courage and and mm. support for one another possibly people are a little bit nervous for a, a little while but i'm sure it will i, yes. I imagine it'll bounce back it, it, it may not even be affected or it might even mm. mean an increase in traffic as people say mm. well i'm not going to be cowed i'm going there well you see with uh, mr Halong. yes the, uh, that's right uh, the uh, is the, the, oh yes, is the, he's the, the president, president, and then yes. there's the, the, the anyway. prime minister. Yep. Uh, off go the uh, the fighters. Off go mm, the planes. Right. They led your bullet and Yes, that's right. Twenty. Yes. Amazing scenes that, that at night with that's these right. huge that, birds of the air flying that's right. out. Yep. What's that going to bring? What, uh, what, what's yes. retaliation is that going to? Uh, yes, to, I know. Now that's a bit of a worry. It's, it? it might have been a knee-jerk reaction or something, but I, I've heard all the experts talking, and of course, I'm most certainly not one, so I can't really.
you know, I can't really, I, I don't know whether that's an appropriate response or whether or not. Um, no, you know, I don't I want it, you to, to. I suppose it's understandable, though, isn't it? You, they'd probably want to do something. Oh, yes, yes. Um, well, I, you know, since 9 11, I consider we've been at war. And, you know, well, it this seems is like it, doesn't uh, World War Three without uniforms, to my mind. Yes, it could be. But, um, but the good thing is. Uh, you have both, you know, continued your travels and, uh, yes. and uh, you know, have done so safely and, and the vast majority of people do. I mean, my sister's mm. just today just got back from uh, an expedition to Canada photographing mm. polar bears. Oh. And, uh, you know, you're always nervous when, when a family member, you know, a lo much-loved family member is travelling and you think, oh gosh, I hope you get mm, back in one piece. Of course. But of course she has and, and you know, and the vast majority has, has of Has she been up at Hudson Bay looking at the polar bears? Well, um, they went to a place called Churchill, I That's think. That's right. And, um, oh, the photographs, yeah. oh, they're just magnificent. And they were out in these things called crawlers, which are sort of oh. big caterpillar, you know, they've got um, that sort of propulsion. You Fabulous know, that... vehicles. <laughs> Amazing to, right, go, to, to yes. actually go on floating ice. These are, yes. what, what do they call those ice? Well, they're like tanks, aren't they? Yeah, but the ice, ice is, flows. Is yes. Yeah, the ice flows. Thank yes. you. Yes. Uh, yes, and, and so she did what you clearly both have done yes. and went out photographing the polar bears mm. and, and the, uh, the huskies uh, that, that do the, the sleds, the, you know, the, the sled mm. expeditions. And, uh, and she just she said it's just quite enchanting. Mm. And so that is somewhere that, uh, you, know, uh, that you know, I'm but, sure visitors will yeah. keep on going wherever they happen to plan well, to it's go. A, it's a Canada wonderful world, but in one, yes. in one spot we exactly. have fear and we have trouble. Yes. Another is the That's joy right. of what your sister's exactly. going to do. Guys, yes. why don't the three of us go together to church hall? Fabulous. And we could all share a room and cut our costs. <laughs> all right. So what are we travelling? <laughs> Economy? Well, well, like well, three <laughs> abreast? And we'll go of next course. October when it's... Peak season when all the rest in economy. Yeah, that's Let's okay. Not and I don't mind being in the middle of okay. the sandwich. But yes. Now, are it? you going to shut up? <laughs> or else, the only thing is, if anyone opens their coffee and spills it on their knee, mm. <laughs> they, the get, they, they get stabbed. Yes. <laughs> But you're not in anger management, are you? I'll, I'll <laughs> no, feel OK. No, so no. we're in economy, right? Oh, yeah, I oh, think yes. so. so three of us. Bit of money, yeah, No yes. sharing of rugs. No, it takes a while to get... <laughs> no sharing no. of rugs. No, that's It takes a while right. to get and to doesn't church. Matter. Or, and okay. Stick to your own pillow, I think yeah. you. <laughs> and there's no sharing of bedrooms when we get to Canada. Oh, no, we'll share a room. We're oh, no. not that costs. sharing oh, rooms. No. He'll no. get up in the middle of the night and be doing something in the lab. And then we'll all miss out on the northern lights. That's right. That's not right. Somebody said, blow the polar bears. I'm going home. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Oh, yeah. See you tomorrow. Cheers, spoils, sports, both of you. Good Bye. on you, Pete. Thanks so much. Good Channel night. 9's Peter Hitchener. Christmas is a little... Sorry. Okay, 27 to 11. Let's go to Faye at Rosebud. Hello, Faye. Oh, good evening, Bruce and Phil. Oh, okay. I'd just like to um, let the listeners know, I got a phone call today um, from this guy stating that he is selling stem cells. Um, it's a spray... It's, and it'll cost $299 a month, um, and it would take about 12 months. They wanted my credit card or bank details. They asked for my name, address, date of birth. Um, I gave them false names, date of birth, and told them that I never had a credit card or bank card. They said that they were going to put me through to a medical uh, person to talk about it, and... Um, I was on the phone for about 20 minutes. I let them go through their spiel and everything else. Um, and they said it wasn't a scam. And then after I hung up, I rang Telstra, told them about it, and there's no number on their data system for the phone number that I've come up on my phone. So I'm just warning people that um, if they do get a call about this stem cell, I've never heard, this is the first time I've ever had a call like this before. And um, just be wary, because it's a scam. What are stem cells? Well, they're saying that um, they were explaining to me it's for people, you know, that are getting on in age. Um, it's a spray can. You put um, one, one spray in the mouth of the morning and one at night. And over a 12-month period where it costs you $299 a month, um, it helps mus your muscle tone. Um, get back to normal. 
Um, and they just went on with this whole big spiel about how good it is for people as they're getting old. Oh, yeah, be very wary of anything over the phone, Faye, please. Oh, I, I know. I just went yeah. on with it and they were asking for my name and address and I gave them a false name mm. and a false address. But I just wanted to see how far they actually went with it. And they said, oh, we'll, we'll put you onto this medical person who will explain everything and then you just send us $299 a month. Mm. And we'll send you, and it'll take around about 12 months for it to actually completely work. Well, you did the right thing, and both uh, today on the phone are also ringing us tonight and also getting in touch with Telstra. Yeah, and they said it's not on their data system, their phone number, so it is a scam. Oh, of course. So, uh, it sounded it from the time you started talking. Oh, exactly. Us. That's why I thought I'll keep on talking yeah. to them for a while. Usually I just say I'm not interested and yeah. hang up. But this one I've never heard of before, um, trying to sell... Stem cells. Oh, yes, over the phone. This is a health, a health thing. But over the phone. It's I know, exactly. Madness. Faye, thank you. That's a great community service you've done, and uh, yeah. thank you for the, alert, for the uh, warning. For, uh, yes, it, it is a warning for elderly people. Gee, they, not to they, fall into them. Well, they're cheeky, are they? And some elderly people would fall for that scam, well, sadly. Well, exactly. You know, they are they are targeting the elderly, I think. Yes. Um, and all they want is, uh, you know, your, your bank details mm. and your credit card. That's that's all they want. Yep, yep. They take the money and run. Exactly. And Thanks. once they've got your date of birth and your name and address mm. and everything else, you know, they can do false... Um, ID with it. Yeah, they can lock into your other uh, personal details. Exactly. All right, exactly. Faye, thank you for that. That's a pleasure. Have a good night. All right, thank you very much. There's quite a bit on the uh, on the internet about it, uh, yes, about right. stem, uh, stem cells. Uh -huh. Stem cell science is an extremely fast-moving field of research with new breakthroughs being reported almost daily. Uh, but with that, uh, with that research uh, comes a warning. Be, yes. very, be very careful not to uh, get rid of that uh, that uh, hard-earned money into something that's a bit of a scam. Yes, you wouldn't order it over the phone, that's for Certainly sure. Certainly not, and be advised by a medical practitioner, yeah, your doctor, of or anything like that. Yes, or maybe even your chemist, who knows? Well, preferably the doctor. But thank you, Faye, very much for the warning. Mm. Good call. Uh, Marie at Greensboro. Yes. Hello. Hello, welcome to Nightline. Hello. I'm just thinking up at your... When you say the French flag... You're saying the wrong colours in order. Well, I wasn't doing them in order. I was just mentioning the trick of, of red, white and blue. Uh, no, it's only because uh, uh, I know a French lady and she was saying they're saying the wrong colours in order because that's not um, the right colours in order. Well, I, I, look, I really don't think the order matters. It's what's in your heart that matters. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, if you can say a flag... The, um, they, they get offended by what, the wrong colours. Okay, what order do, they, do the French want to do? They are blue, white and red. Okay, I'll remember that from the top. Is it blue, white and red? Yeah, it's only because, um, you know, like people say the flag, it shows and they say the colour, that's a different country, that's all. And um, it's like saying we're Australian when we live at the... Um, Stars off the flag. Well, the USA also have the red, white, and blue too. True, but yeah. we, but I mean, you know, if we, if we didn't put the say there's no stars, that's a that's a different flag altogether. Mm. Yeah, I think in view of what's happened over the weekend, it's very unimportant. Oh yeah, but a lot of people get offended. Oops. I don't think they should. All right, well, Marie. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you, Marie, for your. Uh... Your call. 22 minutes to 11, 3 AW. We're talking about romances. We're talking about the making of a princess that uh, rated reasonably well in the top 10 last night for Channel 10. Yeah. Uh, the the, the uh, royal romance of Denmark. Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, what about uh, Peter Hitchener tonight warning us off burnt toast? Did you catch that story? Yes, I did. Burnt toast. And what was the other one? Burnt toast. Oh, French fries. Burnt chips. Toast. Yeah, there was another uh, burnt roast, roast potatoes. There was, yeah, yes, uh, mm. yeah, roast potatoes. Yeah, uh, overcooked yeah. potatoes, which can be a, a bit of a warning. Don't have them uh, burned to a crisp. But getting back to romances, what other romances that would appeal to you? Maybe in latter days, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. I don't know. Mm. Of, perhaps a movie 
based around their life? Mm, I don't think so. I think it's a bit late for that, don't you? Well, let's get more recent, shall we? Yeah, a bit, bit passe, Liz and uh, what are the, Richard. What are the lists you've made? OK, well, I'll come back to that with you shortly, because oh, I'm keen to talk to Chris. Because I spoke about half an hour ago. Um, Excuse me? Uh, also, we have had uh, opening <laughs> remarks. Uh, Ronda Rousey. What are your thoughts on Ronda Rousey and Holly Holm, the, fa the fight? <laughs> you won't see me at uh, Cage Fighting. I wouldn't be seen dead there. What about yourself? Oh, no. No, it doesn't appeal to me. A bit like female mud wrestling. Uh, it's really not my scene. But about 70,000 people went along there. Uh, yeah, well, to each his own. Obviously, they got a kick out of it, but uh, I won't be getting a subscri subscription to it long term, you know? All right, Chris, good evening. Okay, fellas, how you going? Hi, Chris. Um, I would like to uh, see... Uh, I'm actually going to make a coordinated call to the Office of the Minister for Mental Health at the Victorian State Parliament tomorrow and ask, because of my genuine cries for help in the fear of terrorism, which is imminent in Australia, I believe, that could I please, with consent to my psychiatric medication and treatments under the Mental Health Act, be moved to, uh, under a mental health care plan, moved to a centre that is uh, not coordinated or not attended to by Islamic people because I'm starting to really panic about what, the fear of terrorism. Yeah, look, I don't think we'll pursue this, uh, Chris. I'm sorry. It, 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 you know, it's sounding a little uh, slanted. Sorry. No, I don't think, yes, I don't think it can really, at this time, single out anyone or any no. group. No. I think that's very unfair. Chris, we'll move on. Oh, we've got a Kelly. Uh, Kelly, good evening. Hi, Ralph. How are you doing, Bruce and Phil? Yeah, good day, Kelly. Um, I thought I might try to liven up Monday night with a cheeky little joke. Yeah. OK, it's a knock-knock joke. Yeah, so it's like a riddle. Knock-knock, who's there? Yeah. No, the thing is, between the two of you, which one's going to ask the question first, knock, knock? OK, Bruce will do that. All right, who's there? No, you've got to say knock, knock. Oh, yes, all right. Knock, knock. I'll say who's there. Who's there? Yeah. That's a joke. <laughs> so, oh! That's the joke? I hey. know it sounds funny, but you get the other person to say knock, knock, oh. and then you say who's there, and I don't know what to say. <laughs> oh, Kelly, you've lightened the show immensely. Drive there, Rod. Good evening. Hi, Rod. Hi, yeah, Bruce and Phil. I haven't spoken to you for a long time. Um, who's the immigration minister? Mr Dutton. Peter Dutton, isn't it? Why do you ask? Well, he's a complete idiot. Well, within the next 24 hours, we're going to have the refugees coming in from Syria. Right? Well, there's and talk of 12,000 refugees coming in, but they'll be processed. Yeah, they'll be coming in within the next 24 hours. Oh, process, yeah. OK. OK. Can he guarantee that one of these people are going to be a terrorist? No, can you ever guarantee that with any refugees? So why would you let him in here? On compassionate grounds, that's why. Oh, yeah, OK. All right, and their sons and daughters later on can turn against us, like what's happening now. Not necessarily. There mightn't be one terrorist among them. Well, it's already happened here in in uh, Australia, hasn't it? Yeah, but well, what are you going to do with all these refugees? Let them sink? Well, if the Western world started out of that, the whole thing in, in, in the first place, this wouldn't be happening, would it? Yeah, we said that at the start of World War II. If we, if we didn't come to uh, Britain's defence and Hitler had overrun Europe, uh, look where we'd be today. No, no. You, um, you you speak to Second World War veterans and ask them whether they would trust an Arab. Ask a Second World War veteran. No, well, I'm going to let you go again, Rod, because once again you're becoming very immature. There are some very decent Arabs around, just as there are some very decent Australians. Stop pointing the, the finger at everybody. It's 9 to 11. Want to talk to Freddie before the passing parade? We've got time? Yeah. Uh, if not, we'll come back to Freddie after news. Freddie, good evening. Yeah, how you going, Bruce and Phil? Yes, Freddie, welcome. Yeah, I've got a bit of a question for you. Yes? Uh, Gay Waterhouse, I think her name was 
Gay Smith back then. She yeah. used to be in uh, Doctor Who. Is that, am I correct or not? I know she was an actress, yes. I don't know what she was in, uh, whether in fact Doctor Who. Somebody will let us know. Yes, yeah, I'm pretty sure she was in Doctor Who in the right. late 70s, right. maybe about 1980, 81. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've had a few arguments with people about this. They don't believe me, but I'm pretty yeah. sure I'm right. So if someone can ring up and verify it. All right, well, keep listening there, Freddie, and no uh, uh, your answers will be, uh, well, questions will be answered. Yeah, we'll try and answer for you. You were talking about romantic couples earlier and, and who would like to see a film about. Well, I suppose there was interest in Nicole and uh, Tom early on before uh, things went uh, pear-shaped. Yeah, but now that's an interesting one. That's a good one. That's... Uh, the early days. The Scientology. Yes. The... Uh, the yeah. adoption of the children. Yeah, so uh, maybe, you know, we're inquisitive enough to want to know how that got started and worse, why it collapsed. I think it was over Scientology that it, it fell apart. Would there be any interest in a movie about Charles and Camilla, do you imagine? Oh, I don't know. Huh? There's always something within the royals that, that the people love. Yes. Just even with the twin si the young sisters. Yeah. Hello again. Oh. This is John Doremus with a passing parade of the story of a shepherd boy who became the Shah of Persia. He was known as Nader Shah. He built Persia into a major power, then ruthlessly set about destroying it. And I'll be back to tell you more after this message. Housework hands are grimy. After gardening, they're a sight. No matter how your hands get dirty, solve all quickly, get some right. So get busy hands. Clean as a whistle. With Solval. By Solval. The son of a shepherd, Nader was born in a humble hut near Muhammadabad, Persia, on November 11th, 1688. He spent his youth tending his father's flocks. In his early 20s, lusty and hot-blooded, he joined the forces of a local chieftain named Ali Beg. Having won the latter's trust, he murdered him and assumed command of his army. Letting it be known that his ambition was to occupy the Persian throne, Nader methodically set about attaining it. After rousing the people against the feeble monarch Tamasp, he rallied a huge army behind him and assumed the reins of power with little resistance. He then had himself proclaimed Nader Shah, Phoenix of Persia, and conqueror of the world. Having overrun Afghanistan and regaining the whole Persian Empire from the Turks, Nader invaded India, hub of the world's trade for a thousand years, seizing an ever-swelling booty of arms, gems, and coins. His forces were within 70 miles of Delhi before the Indian ruler, Muhammad Shah, and his ministers realized the gravity of their position. They acted too late to halt the juggernaut's advance. Nader sacked the city and in a single day butchered 120,000 people. And then laden with the world's most fabulous treasures, including the peacock throne worth 160 million pieces of gold, he returned to Persia, where he relieved the entire country of taxes in honor of his victory. But Nader, though worshipped by the masses and many enemies within his realm, had difficulties. One day in 1741, while he was riding through the remote forests of Mazaran, he was surprised by two Afghans who jumped from the bushes and fired at him with muskets. By a miracle, the shots only grazed him. Though his bodyguard gave chase, they failed to catch the would-be assassins of the heavy brushwood. Nader Shah thought he recognized one of them as a member of his son Reza Kuli's private retinue. He subsequently accused Reza of plotting his murder. Reza denied it, swearing that he was innocent. And so in a fury, Nader drew his sword and cut out his son's eyes. When he had done so, the youth cried, It is not my eyes you have put out, but those of Persia. Abruptly, Nader was stricken with horror at what he had done, and his mind reeled with weird fancies. Convinced he must destroy Persia to atone for his sins against Reza, he butchered his courtiers and the women of his harem and ordered his most ruthless generals to lay the land waste from north to south. Anyone who opposed his will was blinded or decapitated. By 1747, Persia was a desolate hell. Crops were left untended, and the whole of the great inland plains became a desert haunted only by vultures and crows. Finally, Nader's own tribesmen decided to put an end to the madman's monstrous reign of terror. While he lay sleeping in his tent, a group of them burst in and slashed off his head. 
It was the end of Persia as a major power. Nader had lost far more than he had gained for the country of his forefathers, which soon sank to the level of once great nations like Italy, Greece, and Carthage. This is John Doremus, and goodbye. Now, you talk about romantic couples, and would we like to see their life story portrayed on the big screen? Here's a couple who never made it to the altar, but there was a lot of interest in the romance between Shane Warne and Liz Hurley. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, and they're both international figures. Not necessarily a telly, uh, not a not a not a movie, a chick flick, but mm. certainly a telly movie. No, I think that, so. Yeah. Yes. And there seems to be a lot of people who are willing to put their name and their backing to a lot of these telly movies, aren't they? Yes, and knowing them, they could play themselves. Oh, I don't know. Oh, well, Liz have loved her. She's an actress, and mm. his ego will oh, allow yeah, him to get play in, the let's part. Let's all get into bed then. All right, no. But uh, that have uh, that have uh, doubles, wouldn't they? Yeah. So we're talking about people who make an interesting uh, a movie, you know, because of their their love life. Or, and, and, and it's always sport and show business, isn't it? Yes, you can't get away so. from that. That's yeah. the that's the adoration we have of them. Yes. Well, politicians are a bit boring. Gina aren't they? Reinhardt is not exactly. Uh, you wouldn't be pinning. A telly movie about Gina, would you? Well, I think there has been one, but she's not very glamorous, is she? Oh, no, there has been one. What about Jeffrey Edelston and Brit or whatever? Oh, <laughs> that would leave me cold. Mm, yeah, would, but would that rate? Those, those sort of people, like, oh, there's a fascination with them. Yeah. That eccentricity, the unusual, the offbeat. For the same reason people buy a new idea and Woman's Day on yeah, a Monday. Well, that's right. Yeah, maybe. And there's Jeffrey Edelson, what there is there? Yeah, so come on, folks, you have to think about uh, who you'd like to see portrayed on a film. You know, uh, people who've been making headlines. Perhaps they never made it to the altar, but uh, they had a, a, perhaps a passionate what affair along the way. You'd know, the Kardashian man who became the woman. What, what was her name? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, what was her name? No, I, I can't help you there. I'm not into sex changes. I <laughs> do three any Wangaratta, two Q and Daniloquin. Well, you're not suggesting that there's any tr troubles up there. <laughs> and those studios around the world on the internet. Okay, Susan at Frankston, thank you for your uh, for your patience. Hi, Susan. guys. He, he he was Bruce Jenner. He's now uh, Caitlin. Ah, oh, you're the girl. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> That's okay. I'd like to see um, Warwick and Joanne Kappa. I reckon that'd be a good mm. film. Oh, a beauty. <laughs> mm. Yeah, good one. <laughs> And I really rang to tell you that um, Gay Waterhouse Smith that was, I know for sure that she was in The Young Doctors when she was young. Mm -hmm. Ah, right. Um, I think she may have done a couple of episodes of Doctor Who, but she did, did a bit of modelling as well. Yeah. She's a very pretty woman, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, very. Yeah, so yes. look, up, look up early episodes of The Young Doctors, uh -huh. you'll probably find her. Yeah, she's been around forever, hasn't she? Okay, Susan, we're going to give you a, uh, a pancake parlour voucher. Oh, thank you. For a lovely afternoon or morning tea with the girls at the Pancake Parlour. Open 24 hours at High Point, Doncaster and more than East. Oh, thank you very much. It's our pleasure. You'll love it because it is lovely. Thank you. Yeah, well done, uh, Susan. Thanks for calling. Don't hang up, Susan. Hold on. And uh, congratulations, Lorraine at Chadston. Hi, Lorraine. Hi. How are you boys tonight? Good. Good. Thanks for calling. Uh, you know that gentleman uh, you... Rob or Ron, that was just on, yeah. talking about the, if you, the people that are coming over, you know, that we're supposed to be having 12,000 and oh, that Oh, yes, yes. Well, they are a family. When he said they were due to come in today and all that, there is a family due, there was a family due at 4 o'clock this afternoon, a husband and a wife, a man and a woman, and their child. Yes. And those starting of them. There was just that one lot coming in. They didn't come in, so they're coming in in the morning. Now, they went, they're going to do those for the next week, maybe two weeks. There will be no more in until this couple, or you know, this couple of family, is fixed up. It has just been given over the PVE a little while ago. That is, the, that is it. They are not starting to bring them in until actually the 1st of December. They're just bringing this couple in because they were on a boat. Right. That was in the water, apparently. So that's the latest news on that. That was the one that was on tonight. Right. Just before they went in, before we went over to Paris to see yeah. the uh, service that was over there. And that's when the couple, when the people all ran over in Paris, 
it was because a, a bloke sets fireworks off. Oh, we know that. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. Rod gave the impression and that... that was what it was. But Rod... there is only one mm. couple, unless they've changed since 8 o'clock tonight. That's right. Rod gave there the impression... There is only the husband and the wife oh. and the little... I think she's either three or four or a little kitty coming in with the family because they said that's the only one they're bringing all in. Right. They're going to do all the... Do you know papers yeah. and all this business and everything else? All right. And uh, there is another couple, maybe, that's coming in next week. They still have to look at the papers they have at him because there's something to do with he had problems and mm. troubles over there where right. he was. So in. what you're you're really saying? The bottom line is that it's not a, a holus bolus. Open the uh, open the floodgates and let everyone in. Uh, just this uh, this couple or a few people, and then. Uh, um, perhaps give them uh, visas or whatever and mm. then wait till another month. Yes, Rod gave us the impression 12,000 Syrians were arriving tomorrow. I, I think that was uh, a little bit over the top, Rod. Mm. OK, thank you, Lorraine. I'm sorry to call you, Lorraine. It's a quarter past... I'd like to come to Kangaroo Island for a weekend with me at the end of November. No, nah. but I would go to Norfolk Island. Yeah. No, maybe not. Are you going? Uh, yeah, I might go back. The, the convict uh, settlement there, the penal colony, is reminiscent of Port Arthur. I'd love it. Oh, yes, it's fascinating. Yes. Oh, and yeah. and how, people, how people live there, the, the populace, where they mm -hmm. shop, where, where, what do they work, where, what are the schools? I love all that. Oh, yes, you will. Don't it's, you? Yes, it's, it's a part of Australiana you must visit in your lifetime. Um, 19 past 11. Michael at Kings Park. Good evening, Bruce and Phil. How are you, gentlemen? Uh, hello again, Michael. Good day. Uh, just a uh, couple of points. Um, Bert and Patty, I think, would make a good uh, good screen couple movie, whatever you were talking about before, with a loving couple. Yeah, yeah, yes. that'd be terrific, wouldn't it? Um, another thing, I um, thoroughly enjoyed watching the, the documentary, the little movie last night about Frederick and Mary. That was quite interesting. What's that with a good wife and... Totally enjoyed it. Yes. But the, the main reason I rang, guys, is just getting really annoyed with some of these small-minded calls that are calling, and just because the the terrible thing happened over in Paris or it's happening overseas, doesn't make every person of that race or creed or whatever. It, 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 I hate using the word terrorist, but it, I hate people that you know just look at people and they assume straight away, oh, because that's happening overseas. That's what they are. If you've got nothing to say and nothing nice to say, just don't say it at all. Don't bother ringing. It's it's just annoying. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, I, I don't know, I don't understand people that ring up and want people barred from from certain you know not going into unemployment places and all that. It's just it's just ridiculous. Isn't yeah, well, uh, you know, uh, people are very passionate at the moment and very emotional about what's happened. You know, passion I passion I can understand, but. Saying stuff like that can cause more problems. Yes. And, you know, it's just it's just not on. But, guys, continue, continue the good show. Love listening to you guys. Good on you, mate. Thank you for your comment, too. Yeah. They're very, uh, very balanced. Always enjoy your calls, Michael. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, Michael, thank you. Uh, B down at Cowes. Are you there, B? I am. Thank you, boys. Um, about the uh, couple, I think Deb B. Ness and Hugh Jackman, they've both got very interesting lives. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You and Deborah, and I yeah. think that would make a good um, movie. And also Terry Norris and his wife. Oh, oh, a lovely couple. Julia Blake, I think your name is. Yes, that's correct. Yes, I couldn't think of her name. Yes, I right. think it would make a good miniseries, mm, too. Yes. Hey, good yeah. thought. Thank you, B. You're w quite welcome. Okay, nice talking to you. You as well. Hey, Thank you very much. Hey, B, you might like this. Have a listen. A patch device for your mobile phone. Oh, yes, I've heard you talk about those. Patched. It's the word patch with an apostrophe D. Patched. Yes, it, it, um, it, it, what it does is reduce mobile phone radiation by up to 95%. You can purchase them at Chemist Warehouse, and it's called Patched. Yeah, congratulations, B. So, uh, 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 just a sneaky little p packet, if you like, to, uh, mm -hmm. to house your mobile phone. Thank you very much indeed, guys. And hold the line, don't hang up. We'll uh, get details sent to you. Now, another topic we raised at the start of the show after 10. I saw this uh, number plate, a Victorian number plate, with simply X on it. That's all it had. And it was registered. You know, it wasn't one of those personalised number plates. 
originally probably was the 24th number plate issued in Victoria, maybe 100 years ago or more. Have you seen an unusual a number plate you'd like to share with us. Perhaps you have a personalised one and you want to tell us all about it. Or have you seen a, a bumper sticker that you found amusing or worth uh, reporting? What's the amusing licence plate? Like like Foxy Lady or something written out? Yeah, I suppose so, you know. But, well, even Ken is a big uh, rock and roll fan from the 70s and his number plate, as you might know, is Skyhooks. No, no. Personalised number plate. Do you like people who have their own initials on their number plates? Do you think that's a, a bit affected or doesn't worry you? I don't think it worries me. No. no. You wouldn't mind having BM007 or something on your n number plate? Which I don't have. No. Uh, David, good evening. Oh, hi there. Yes, David, talk to us. Um, yeah, I'd just like to talk about the um, national security line we have here in Australia. Mm. Now, I had, to, I had to call them up the other day about something, and they didn't seem to actually take me seriously, and the, um, the actual local uh, Victoria police actually didn't seem to take me very seriously either when I had to report something. Well, well, tell it, go, go on. Tell us what you reported. Mm. Um, well, what I actually reported was I was actually on um, propaganda radio, which was actually being broadcast over the uh, citizen band radio around Melbourne. And um, pretty much it was um, all just propaganda radio, pre-recording of, um, you know, about all the actions that um, Europe had taken and um, pretty much uh, threatening Australia and stuff like that. And um, even when I reported to, you know, Crime Stoppers and these other organisations, you know, they just didn't really uh, seem to take it very seriously. And um, yeah, I'm just wondering, like, when other people actually call up these... Um, services like do they actually seem to take people seriously or well know? well let me ask you is the propaganda still being broadcast um every so often it is yes i yeah. suppose they're inundated with absolute nutcases mm -hmm. day in day out for 24 hours a day yes they answered everyone and inspected everyone that came mm. along they'd be on the job 24 hours a day yeah i guess they have to be selective david mm. about what they follow up uh, but you're right, though, David, and it's, it's probably well, very good on your part to have mm. uh, alerted them. Yeah, I'm sure they've taken it but, on board. And I'm sure they have, but uh, if mm. no immediate action, that would probably mm. be the reason that there are so many, mm. uh, so many cases yes. and perhaps more, uh, more pressing issues. Yes, maybe that's true. But thanks for your call and your alert, David. Terry in Perth, good evening. Oh, hello there, guys. Hi. I was just looking. It's only 8.30 over here at the moment. It's bizarre, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. In the same country, 8.30. Now it's 11.30 our time. Oh, well, that's the way it is. Hey, I just thought I'd ring and tell you I've got private number plates, um, and they're bright pink, and they're TLC, and they're actually my first three names. I've got three Christian, uh, yeah, Christian names. Right. And it's TLC, so... Oh, tender loving care. I'm, absolutely not. Ah. <laughs> no. My name's Terry Lee Catherine. Oh, that's nice. And yeah, so I've been blessed with those and I'll have them yeah. all my life. And I've been offered... Or I was offered three and a half thousand dollars for them once. Oh, one. yeah, they can get a very yeah. pretty price, some of those. Exactly, but I would never part with them. Anyway, I just thought I'd tell you that. Have a good night. Oh. How's Perth? You, you, you played host yeah. to Prince Charles at his birthday. Look, you know, I live in Cottesloe, and he was actually just up the road yesterday, and I just couldn't be bothered. The crowds were huge, and it was very hot. It was like, it was nearly 40 here the day. I think it was Saturday he was here. Uh, yes, you're and right. It, yeah, and um, there was no sea breeze. There was nothing, and Ooh, I thought, no. nah. nah. Maybe if it was Kate and William, but I yeah. I'm not really interested in him. So just let him have his tea party at the Cottesloe yeah. Civic Hall. And, yes. Yeah. Well, although, give credit where it's due. They did get a good crowd and seemed to be very well received, didn't they? Yes, we love them. I do, but I, I was, it was just too much, too hard. So yeah. I went down to the beach instead. Oh, and <laughs> good, uh, good thought. And by the way, Terry, uh, 115 years ago, my father was born in Cottesloe. Mm. Oh, congratulations! Yes, yeah, thank you That's for that. Lovely. And it was back lovely. then. It was just sand dunes, you know. Well, Terry, thank you for your call from Perth and uh, from the you. other side of the country. That's lovely. Okay, bye-bye. Good on you. Nice hearing from you, Terry. Goodbye. Uh, speaking of number plates, guess what I saw today? The number plate was just, well, three letters, O-R-O. -O.
Oro. Wouldn't I love to get those for my car? What about the number plates with baby on board? And I wondered for years what that was, and I think it's quite legitimate that mm. there is a baby on board if there was a bingle or a slight accident, that, yeah. that the baby would be cared for first. Yeah. Then there are the family. Have you ever seen any of the family mm. caricatures on the back of the, the car? Yes. I, I think baby on board is sort of to alert people, hey, drive very carefully, don't get too close. Well, you know? it's, yeah, it's all that. Well, obviously. Um, and, uh, and other personalised number plates. Yeah. And, 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 of course, the most expensive number plates was Vic 0001, I yeah. suppose. It well, would be. Uh, are just... you a collector? And and, uh, and they've had experience in, in mm. rare number plates. A lot of these vintage cars have very classic plates, don't they? You know, part of the Lindsay Fox collection or the John Laws collection, perhaps. Yeah, 28... It's over to you. We only have half an hour. It's an abridged show on weeknights. We're going to talk about uh, great romantic movies in light of the success of... Uh... Mary, the making of the princess last mm -hmm. night. Yeah. Uh, what are the ones that touched a chord with you? Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps we'll make it real life rather than a fear to remember, but real life characters uh, who were portrayed on the screen. Would people still care about uh, Queen Victoria and Albert a hundred years later? I don't think so. Historically, perhaps. I, don't. I think if you're going to do history, you go back to Caesar oh. or Napoleon. All right. Um, but no one in between. Or, or, or Henry, and you do a whole series on it. Mm. It rates its back died on. Yeah. Um, but just recent history, I don't mm. believe. No, right, perhaps you're right. Nine six nine hundred six nine three. The great romantic, uh, based on truth. Mm. Nine six nine hundred six nine three. Or anything you'd like to get off your chest. Here's a chance. Any topic under the sun. Now, what about the? Uh, uh, it was at Ronda Rousey and and uh, uh, Holly Holm. Mm, yeah, got an enormous crowd. Yeah, over sixty thousand. Oh, I couldn't think. believe it. Could you? Stadium, though, though. You know, I mean, there would be the argument. Well, what is the difference between men? You could you know, have a, a you know two <laughs> boxes in the ring and mm. uh, beating the uh, the uh, devil out of them. Yeah. Um, and yet, what is know, the difference? Uh, and yet, earlier this year at Etihad Stadium, they had a darts contest. And Etienne was packed to the rafters again for that. Well, there you are. Yeah. There was the upheaval of furniture and people smashing. I know, yeah. Oh. People go to the opening of an envelope if they get the chance. But it, there's a bit of blood associated with mm. it. Oh, so much the better. Yeah, unfortunately. That is sad. Yeah, well, even the Grand Prix, I mean, you know, a lot of people go just hoping to see a spill, I think, which is unfortunate. You know, a lot of people just... Are there for, because they're thrill seekers, well, aren't they? It is the thrill of it, isn't it? It's yeah. the smell and the sound and the tyres and the so. screeching around the bends. Yeah. George at uh, Albanvale. Hello, George. Hey, guys. Yes, George. How are you? G'day. Thanks for ringing. Um, you, you, you know, this uh, Ronda Rousey, it was a great big send-up for her to be here. Right. And... Um, a person like that to be just, like, knocked out <laughs> after being, like, no one thought she'd be knocked out, and she was knocked out. And it happened here in Melbourne. <laughs> well, that's a sport, isn't it? That's the sport. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So no one's that good. No one in, on this planet is that good to think that they can... Um, just, just carry like like a big banner of I'm the best because um, we're not. None of us are, are that good. Well, that's true. Farlap, who won the 1930 Melbourne Cup and came second in 1931, was he in the ring last night? <laughs> um, was she promoted as being the, the the greatest? I think she she was. She had too much promotion. I think she was on holidays here, and, and she probably thought she was that good mm. that all of a sudden that um, this girl, you know, kicked her backside, if you mm. know what I mean. Well, in more mm. ways than one. Mm. Yeah, so, so no one's better than no one because always someone's chasing a, a title mm. to be better than someone else. Where would she have got the promotion from? Well, that, that's something to do with Australia, obviously, because... Um, it was all set up, and she was here, and she was on the project show, yeah. and she was there ages ago. 
Uh-huh. That's right, she was too. Yeah, yeah, so it makes you wonder oh. who is the promoters. Well, whoever it is, it's a very clever campaign. Yeah, she was a certain favourite. And they started, as he, as uh, George said, huh. months ago on, on, the, uh, on the project. Oh, yes. And then kids lining up around the uh, mm. Federation Square to get tickets and information about it. Mm. Well, then she comes out and promotes Very cleverly done. Mm. That's all the rage at the moment. Next we'll have bullfighting. So over. if you get the right issue, they get the right sport. That's right. And a promotable person, yeah. you're making a fortune. That's right. You can't go wrong. Uh, Satu at St Albans. Yes, hello. Hello. My name is Satu, as you know. I come from Finland and I'm not a terrorist. I've been here since 1981, but um, getting back to that um, um, about movies of favorite people, yeah. so I would like to have Bert Newton, no doubt that it has been uh, uh, requested and he's declined or whatever, but uh, Bert and Patty, Patty and, and I think their life story or his life story would be just wonderful. Yes, it would, actually. Yeah, it'd be a fairy tale romance, wouldn't it? I think it? you're right. Mm. <laughs> okay, then. And uh, yeah, nice suggestion, Satu. Thank you for that. Yes. Okay, then. Thank you. Goodbye. Good night. And every aspect of his life has touched ours, hasn't it? Yes. Uh, whether it be a, a personal appearance or uh, one on uh, local television. Yes. That oh. endeared him to us. All our lives, no doubt about it. Hmm. So that's a, a good thought. Yes. Perhaps it might happen. Uh... Jeff's there. Are you there, Jeff? Yes, I am, uh, Bruce and Phil. Yeah, what's, what's, on, um, what's on your mind? Oh, just about the romantic movies. Or, or I think the word romantic's probably a bit far stretched with this one, but the movie about um, uh, a person and their wife is the Johnny Cash story, Walk the Line. Oh, that was an incredible movie. A beauty. It was, and, and just, um, it was certainly, oh, what would you call it, a, a very strained sort of relationship, and uh, I, I couldn't, re- can't remember the wife's name, I've got to say, but she was certainly um, put up with a lot, you've got to say. Oh, when, you, uh, when you June Carter. That's it, that's it, yes, Bruce, and um, yeah, so yeah, I found and that played, a, and played immaculately by Reese with a spoon. Oh, really? I couldn't, there, yeah, couldn't I? I just or remember. With, or with a knife. <laughs> exactly, Bruce. Hey, look, Bruce, you were saying earlier about um, uh, what Ross and John said about uh, watching that movie and no bloke would want to see it, and it brought back a memory. You might remember a few years ago that they had the movie that was a bo- um, at the box office and that was um, Sex in the City. Do you remember that? And it was just huge. Yes. And I went with my wife and a friend went with his wife and we were lined up and it was one of those ones that was so busy you had to line beforehand and we're there and my mate turns around and he says to me, have you noticed anything? And we looked up and down the line as far as we could see, and we were the only two blokes standing in the queue. And, uh, oh, just, no. and so we, we came very self-conscious, and then, guys, they walked up and down and were handing out little show bags with all sorts of women's items in them, I suppose you could say, yes. and it made us feel even more self-conscious. Oh. So, why, yeah, did, I, why didn't you go off and have a lager? <laughs> no, because we were there with our dear wives and we were supporting them. Oh, well, that's <laughs> decent. That's a lovely thing to yeah, do. For the s- same reason, Jeff, no man is supposed to read Fifty Shades of Grey. I, I can believe that too, you know, and I actually remember when that came out, I was, uh, we were over in Thailand and we were around the pool in the, um, in the place we were staying and so many people were just sitting around on pool lounges reading Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, I think that's been made into a movie already. No, they're making it a, a, another film, uh, Jeff, uh, Fifty Darker Shades mm. of Grey, to make it even <laughs> more salacious. Mm. <laughs> no, I don't think I'll be interested in that one, no, guys. Uh, give that a miss, Jeff, please. No worries. Okay. Thanks Did very you, much, guys. Oh, Jeff, thank you. Did you read that, Rowena? Mm. No. No. I know a lady who did, and it really surprised me. I saw it in her bookcase, but I suppose she's free to uh, to pick up any book she chooses. Did it affect her in any way, shape, or form with uh, with her as a friend? I found she's become more amorous of mm. late. Mm. Watch that very closely. Yes, I think I bet her, yes. What, sort of behind your back, or...? No, uh, no, she's learned all sorts of new tricks. Hmm. Mm. Is she wearing grey a lot? I just hope she doesn't read the Kama Sutra. Is she wearing grey a lot? <laughs> I haven't noticed especially. Oh. I think she's over the phase. But the women are figures. Over the phase? The phase. Oh, the phase. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Interesting. Is she, what, that neighbour? Uh, no. No, no names. I don't want to embarrass her. She's free to read what she chooses. Hmm.
But uh, I don't think a bloke could be seen dead, would he, reading Fifty Shades of Grey? No, I think they did. Oh, perhaps not. She'd love you to read it. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm over the hill. I'm past my prime. What are you reading at the moment? Um, I'm reading a book about the big band era in Britain during oh, the war years. Oh, yeah, I'm going with her. During the night, it's getting down to 16 degrees, so it's a mild evening, a mild morning on the way. Tomorrow's weather, fine most of the day, but of a change between 3 and 4 tomorrow afternoon with blustery winds coming in. But before that, a top of 31 degrees. OK, very pleasant. Hey, not too late to ring us, 96900 Maybe win a prize. Hello, Irene, what's news? Yes, um, gentlemen, the news is... I was listening to the lady earlier on at the beginning of the show, Faye, she was telling you about a scam. Well, I'm going to tell you about another scam. I read an article in the Herald Sun last week. The story was about a couple who received a letter from a bank in Hong Kong regards an oil magnate who supposedly died in a motor car accident with all his family. Now, to tell you the truth, boys, I had the very same letter last year. Now, it states, the bank states that uh, the soil magnet, magnet, because he had no next of kin and didn't have a will, that this couple, because they had the same surname, was entitled to inherit a very large windfall, 43736580 dollars The bank states they will keep 55%, the couple will receive 40%, and 5% would go to charity. Now, the letter I got was exactly the same wording, more or less, exa you know, the same wording. But I just thought I would let you know, boys, because it would make, you know, there's some vulnerable people out oh, there yes. who might receive a letter like this and fall for it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I thought, I, better, I was just lying in bed listening to you, and I thought, oh, I must ring and tell them about that well. because... You know, there's so many people you read, see on the television and you read about these gullible women looking for men and sending them money overseas. Yeah, and, so easy, yes. Yeah, and you think to yourself, I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not a naive person, I'm certainly not a shrewd person, but I'm not, I'm not naive, I wouldn't fall for that, you know. No. And this poor couple got one the same last week. When I read it, I thought, my goodness, it's the very same letter yeah. that I got last year. But I just thought I'd um, put it out in the rubbish. I thought, oh, I knew straight away it was a scam. I mean, and, uh, and you don't know, hundreds of people might have got the same letter, Irene. Yeah, they probably did. And I didn't realise mm. till I heard Faye talking about this yeah, other scam. Yeah, yeah. You know, there must be circulating a lot of these oh, look, letters yeah. around. But you see, if we open up the lines and said, let's uh, let's hear the scams, we'd be but here for four hours. You would be there all night. Yeah. I know, but I just thought I'd warn you, listen. Thank you listen very up. much. I appreciate that. Um, Irene, yes. to hold the line, I've got a hamper world Christmas hamper for you. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, Bruce, that's uh, wonderful. And now, it's valued at $100, and if you're oh. interested in uh, buying one or ordering mm -hmm. your, your Christmas gift hamper, go to hamperworld.com.au. Lovely. But we want you to hold the line, don't hang up. And, uh, oh, that's absolutely wonderful, and Bruce. We, and we do, do want to thank Hamper World for the Christmas hamper. That'll be delivered before Christmas, Very I generous. Remember. Every Christmas for I five, uh, seven years they've been doing that. Yes, they've got a big heart. Hamper world. And a big hamper, too. Yes. Anna at Seabrook, good evening. Hello, Anna, are you there? The, oh, she's dropped out already. Dropped out. We might take a break in view we of might, that. We might and give the weather for... A few beautiful lines called Inner Strength. 
If you can start the day without caffeine or pep pills, if you can be cheerful, ignoring aches and pains, if you can resist complaining and boring people with your troubles, if you can eat the same food every day and be grateful for it, if you can understand when loved ones are too busy to give you time, if you can overlook when people take things out on you, when through no fault of yours, something goes wrong. If you can take criticism and blame without resentment, if you can face the world without lies and deceit, if you can conquer tension without medical help, if you can relax without liquor, if you can sleep without the aid of drugs, if you can do all these things, then you're probably the family dog. Copyright restricts distribution of this piece by any means of duplicate. Well, that's our day almost over. It's gone so quickly. Uh, Tuesday is about to dawn. Thanks for staying up with us. Uh, Luke will be with us. Luke uh, over with Australia overnight. Luke Boner, yes. Yeah, and, uh, and a good show. So that's coming up after the news at, uh, at midnight. Thank you, Audrey Hepburn, for helping us out in the control room tonight. Yes, good night, Barbara. And uh, Barbara and Audrey uh, helping us. Thank you. Yes, and look forward to tomorrow night already, Bruce. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's right. And uh, well, fascinating show Tuesday night always is, isn't yes, it? Yes, uh, sometimes the best night of the week. Oh, really? Now, something special happened on the border on this day in 1824, on the border between New South Wales and Victoria. Can you guess what it was? No. The Murray River was discovered by oh. Hamilton Hume. That's almost interesting. I'd like to give you a history Good lesson. Good night, Samuel, Carter and Amelia, and uh, Charlotte and Emily, sweet Ella Grace, little William Oliver, and Sophia Grace. What a crowd they are, what beautiful things they are in my life. And good night to them. Safe home, Bruce. Good night, folks. I'm Bruce Mansfield. And I'm still the flipper. And that's the way she went today. <laughs>